Great. Thanks, Luke. So as Luke indicated, in the June release, we came out with a few new features. And one of those features is an advanced property area of uh, the Web Process Designer, where you can use two options for suspending and uh, setting trace levels with your process. So I'm going to, uh, to demonstrate and uh, talk about those features. So. So the, the first one is a, uh, an option for suspending on on-caught fault. So basically, there are a lot of times where you do not want to have processes just fail. You know, you want to know why they are failing, and you want to go in there and, and potentially recover them from failing so that uh, the business process can continue smoothly. Um, in the past, in the web developed processes, we didn't have an option to do this. So basically, any time that something went wrong in your process, whether with a program error or something uh, that was associated with a external service that you were trying to communicate uh, with that wasn't available, uh, we would basically just terminate the process. We would, what internally we call faulting the process. So, uh, so what would happen is basically the process would go away and uh, you'd, you'd be able to go and see in the console what went wrong, but you weren't able to, to do any kind of repair operations uh, against that. But now we've added this option, which will allow you to say, okay, if there's something that goes wrong, basically suspend the process so that you can go into our admin console, filter lists of processes that are in this suspended state, and potentially fix them or at least understand what's going wrong so that you can prevent it from happening down the line. Um, we also have an API for doing some of the fixing, and I'll, I'm not going to go into details on that, but it's available from the process developer documentation. Um, and so some of the things you can do is in the console, you can retry activities and resume processes, you can set data, etc. Okay. Then, in addition to this option, we also added the ability to kind of up the tracing level. We had a default tracing level on web processes, which normally works pretty well for, for debugging, but sometimes you need more information, and sometimes you actually want less information to be captured associated with, uh, with processes. So I'll go into that as well as the uh, suspend on on-caught fault, and I'm going to do a little bit of a demo, at least associated with the suspend on on-caught fault. Okay, so where does the where do these options show up? So we so basically there's process properties that you can get to either from the properties button in the uh, upper left hand corner of the toolbar or by clicking on the start event of your process. Once you click on the start event, there is an advanced tab that has these two new options on it. Uh, so suspend on fault and uh, tracing level. And you can see, in, in this case, I actually have turned on the suspend on fault. So if it's checked, it's going to do that. If it's not checked, that means that if there is a problem or fault, it's going to terminate the process. And our default right now is to just terminate the process, because not every process do you need or want to have basically hold up your system. So. <clears throat> Let me just go into a little bit more details on the suspend on on-caught fault. And I'm using the term suspend on on-caught fault uh, because in the future we're uh, going to be adding a capability where you can basically catch faults in the web developed processes. So today you can only do that in process developer developed processes, uh, but in the uh, coming releases we're going to add a capability to uh, catch faults inside of your process. But even in the, the case where you're catching faults in your process, there are times where you don't anticipate faults and you don't want the, the, the process to just kind of go away. So even as we add that capability, we're going to still uh, allow you to say, hey, if I didn't catch something, I still don't want the process to terminate. So basically, whenever a fault happens, as I mentioned, the default behavior is just to end the process. But when you check this option, instead we're going to suspend the process. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a m number of different reasons why you'd want to suspend the process. Sometimes, and, and oftentimes, the process is pretty mission critical. They're doing things like provisioning employees that are either coming on or, or leaving the company. You want to make sure that people don't have access to information when they're no longer employed, and you want to make sure they have access to information when they are employed. So some of these processes uh, need to, uh, it can't just 
end and not do what they're expected to do. You'd want to basically go in and figure out what happens. You don't want other situations like people processing orders and stuff to just have orders drop because of a program error. Or, or you don't want checks not, not to be issued to your employees, you know, so if Informatica is using our product to, to issue me a check, I want to make sure that I get that check, you know. I don't want it just, oh, we have a problem in our program. So, uh, you know, so the, these types of processes are what we're seeing get developed in our um, uh, Informatica Cloud real-time system. And so we need to incorporate some of the capabilities that we had in our on-premise process developer developed processes in the web design process. So one of the things that Suspend does is it gives you an opportunity to correct the process or at least know what the process was, what happened, so that you can manually do the right thing. So provision an employee manually if your automated procedure didn't work. In, in addition, one of the, the things is that, that um, you gain from suspending the process is kind of a longer period of time to analyze the issue. Because uh, what we do by default is that clean up processes in the cloud every um, day. So uh, basically, you, you can only look at processes that have completed or terminated for one day, and after that we purge the information associated with them. So this suspend, we don't purge suspended processes, so you'll be able to look at them a little bit longer. We will probably still have a, uh, a window where we're going to get rid of suspended processes, but it will be much longer than the default of one day. All right. So once you, you use this option and something does go wrong, uh, we have the, uh, the the monitor capability of Service and Process Console, and in there you can go to the process monitoring and the active processes selection, and by filtering on the state suspended, you can see anything that got suspended and the reason. In this case, it got suspended because it was faulting, and I'm going to show this in the demo, so I'm just going to uh, quickly how to go through the ways that you can find out what happened. So one is the active processes page and just filtering by suspended. Oftentimes you got hundreds of processes that are running and to try to find one in uh, the, the right state is hard. So having that quick state filter is an important um, aspect of this. Uh, additionally, once you drill down from that page into the process detail, you can find out sort of where things went wrong. Like in this case, I can see it started and then it got to the service call and then it, it uh, got suspended. From there, in order to really do any more complicated work with process to try to fix it, currently you have to drill down into a greater level of detail, which does expose some more internals, what we call, what's called Beeple and such like that, a business process execution language. Uh, but from there, you're able to take advantage of a lot of capabilities that we've had for a long time that, that uh, customers really love. So pretty much from this page, if it's suspended, the first thing you're going to do is drill in using this little uh, go to detail button. And once you're in there, actually the, the system highlights the faulting activity for you. So you don't have to navigate around. It pretty much shows you, oh, okay, this is what's faulting and it can show you what the fault message. So in this case, there was some error about this resource not being found. And, uh, and from there, I can sort of just figure out, okay, by clicking around, what went wrong with this particular activity. Um, so the, the nice thing is, is that you don't really have to drill around but there, uh, in order to find the faulting element. But uh, you might need to drill around in order to fix whatever happened that caused it to fall. Okay. So <clears throat> one of the things that you might click around into is looking at the variables. Like in this case, it was a uh, an external service that was being called, get get vehicle detail, and you might want to look at well, what got passed into the the detail that caused this to fall. You know, is it a problem with your data? And if it is a problem with the data, you can use uh, the edit button to, to update the data that's going to be passed to that external service, to that service call. Once you uh, fix the data, in this case, if, uh, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this, uh, once I fix the data, I can actually go into the activity and say, 
hey, retry, there's actually a few different buttons. There's resume, retry, and complete the, the highlighted activity, and or I can resume the process. So there's, there's, there's a number of reasons why we have these three options and, and not just retry. One of the reasons is that <clears throat> um, sometimes uh, retrying isn't going to work because the external service is down or some, something has gone wrong with some external system and you need to think the process out by basically setting what data should have been returned uh, by that activity and just saying, okay, I'm going to set the data manually and I'm going to act like the activity completed normally even though it didn't. But there's other times where you say, well, I'm going to set the correct input data and I'm going to retry this. Or I'm going to just resume because now that I understand the problem, I'm not going to try to fix it here. I'm going to go and manually do, do something. So at the, the activity level or the step level, you can basically resume, retry, or complete. And then at the process level, you can do a resume of the whole process once you get past the point where it was faulting. And, or you could just terminate it at the, the process level as well. So these are a couple of options on this toolbar that apply to the process, whereas on this toolbar, it actually applies to the activity or the step, as we call it. Uh, additionally, we have this tracing level, and so tracing level allows you to either up the level of persistence associated with uh, your process so that you can get more information when you drill into it, or lower it, because there's actually a lot of cases where you say, I want to lower the information so that I don't uh, have uh, uh, sensitive information necessarily being stored in a uh, cloud uh, log somewhere, right? So um, there are some ca caveats with the tracing level. And so if you have uh, wait events or uh, receive or message events in your process, uh, there, it basically, you won't be able to say persistence level brief. It will automatically go to full. And when a cloud process calls another pro cloud process, if, uh, if caveat one is in force, it will also enforce it for the, the calling process and so on. Uh, so, but it does give you an ability to kind of lower the uh, logging level in certain pretty useful cases and also up it in certain useful cases. So I'll just go into that a little bit more. So our default logging level will actually save the start and, and service call data in the process execution log, which we keep around for one day, as I had mentioned, even after the, the process is completed uh, until the purge happens. Sometimes people don't want to have that. They, they basically are saying, hey, I'm going to proxy information down to my agent, but the agent is where the real work is happening because there's sensitive information. And even the fact of what data was passed down to the agent, I don't want to record that in the cloud anywhere. And so you, you may want to use none to prevent some of that data from getting logged, right? So the, the uh, say, the start, end, and service calls will get logged. Um, even if you don't have receive events and such like that in there. And sometimes the, the default logging level doesn't capture enough, and so you just want to switch it to ver verbose so that you can get a little bit more information. Most of that, that extra information is available only in the process detail at what I mentioned is the Beeple layer. But still, it can be useful when you're diagnosing a tricky problem. Okay. So, that's all I've got in the presentation part, but what I'm going to do is actually switch over and uh, do a demo of this for you guys. All right, so um, let's see over here. So you might have processes like, like this process that says, I'm going to accept an order, right, and uh, process the incoming order. I think a lot of us have seen this in our demos and such. And this is the type of process that you wouldn't want to fail, right? You'd want to say, hey, if something goes wrong here, I've got to go in there and fix this thing because there's either valuable information being captured here or critical information in order for the order to be properly processed. I'm actually not going to demo for, uh, suspending this one because I, uh, I wanted just a simpler one that I can go in and fix and show. So, so what I did is I created one that ba is based on our admins.com connector that just goes out and finds vehicle information based on a, uh, a past VIN number. So uh, uh, this process takes in a VIN number, it calls get vehicle detail, which then 
will return back uh, some make and model information so that I can then return it in uh, the, the service call here. The, um, uh, the VIN number, though, for some crazy reason, I didn't make this field required. And because it's, it's not required, so something actually can go wrong. So I'm going to use that fact in, in probably common practice. I would have made this required, so it wouldn't go wrong, but I'm, I'm not going to do that now. So, okay, so this is a simple process. And uh, if I kind of come over here to the design page and take a look at the process, I can see, you know, where it's available. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to execute that once. I'm going to put in a VIN number. And I'm gonna going to have it execute, and it came back and said, "Okay, the model is a, a STS, and it's a Cadillac." So, okay, that's excellent. So if I go to the the process console and look at active processes, I can see at 12:25, uh, get vehicle de detail was executed, and if I look at uh, the the get vehicle detail, I can see that it got passed properly the the VIN number on the start and such like that. But now, what if I forgot to put in the VIN number, you know? And this is a simple case, but imagine that there's some insurance process. You're trying to kind of look up something to, uh, to get the vehicle insured. You wouldn't want the process to die just because of some sort of fault associated with the passing of the data. So uh, I'm just going to execute this. And you can see it's sort of just spinning out here. I should have probably cleared this data. But it's just spinning, kind of waiting for the result. And now if I go to the active processes list, I can get some more information associated with it that tells me that uh, this thing is suspended and faulting, right? And I say, oh, OK. Well, one is I could have lots and lots of processes. So one of the things you might want to do is say, Hey, let me look at all suspended processes. So there's only this one. And you can just use this filter down here to do that. Or you can even say, hey, I want to look at suspended faulting. If there was, for some reason, other things that were suspended that were not in the faulting state, uh, that you could go ahead and take. Okay. So, um, so basically, I can find out what's getting suspended. And then what I can do is actually um, go into that process detail, and it shows up. And one of the things I can see is that nothing actually got passed to the start event. If you remember before, when I looked at that other process, um, I could see that it actually um, did get passed the VIN number, whereas in this other case, there was nothing passed. So I'm, I'm already suspicious here of what the heck happened, Why? What, what's going wrong. So now I'm going to drill into this, this next level of detail. And as I uh, alluded to, it highlights automatically what's the defaulting element. So I don't have to necessarily go searching around to find it. And down in the, the detail area, I can actually see what the fault was. So it's saying resource not found, VIN's not found. So it, it's, it's basically telling me, hey, there's there's something wrong with the, the data that's being passed because I'm looking for some non-existent resource and such like that. So one of the things I could do is say, oh, well, let me look at the input variable associated with this uh, guy, right? And I can actually come in here and say, oh, I see what the problem is. I, I didn't pass a VIN number. And so I'm going to come in here, and what I'm just going to do is uh, paste in a, a known VIN number to execute, and um, what I'm going to do is then save this. And basically, I'm going to uh, come back up here, and I'm going to retry this. And I'm going to resume the process. It's warning me if I resume and I haven't taken any actions to correct the issue that the thing could still fault. So I'm, I'm going to say, nah, I know that. I'm going to just resume it. And then we can see that the process actually did uh, go all the way to completion and uh, so on. And if I come back over here, I might not have done this in enough time. Yeah, it did. I did this in enough time, and it, it basically responded uh, with the, the model number and uh, the make. And actually, if I come over here to um, to the active process monitoring, I could see that it also completed. So it took took me like four minutes to do that. So you could see that normally it would be, you know, <laughs> sub-second or whatever to complete this process. But in this case, 
because I was drilling around, it, it took me basically four minutes to complete it. If I drill into it now, I see that you know basically it went through. I still don't have anything on the start, but I could I could get the uh, other information associated with what got passed in and out of the process. So so that's the um, uh, suspend on on, on cut fault. Um, the other thing is I can uh, show a little bit of the uh, uh, the detail of none. Um, so why don't we just quickly do that? So what I'm going to do is come into this process, which is a very simple process, uh, get vehicle detail. And what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to turn off the suspend on fault and I'm just going to say tracing level is none, right? I'm going to apply this guy, save it, and publish it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it again with uh, the uh, the with the VIN number in there, and um, um, you see it came back very quickly. And if I go over to the process console and look at the active processes, I can go in here and basically I don't have any log information at all associated with this guy. And if I drill in, I'm basically not going to find anything inside of here that contains that data that got passed. So it basically makes it harder to debug stuff, you know. So, you, so if you're in development, you definitely don't want to be turning this to none. But if you want to make sure that we're not capturing more information and potentially have somebody who shouldn't have access to the information, even if it's a, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, an operator, uh, that uh, you know that information isn't captured and isn't logged anywhere that's uh, persisted. 